it is time for a change. If you've been watching me for longer than, well, a week, you have seen this intro before. I have been using this intro for almost two years. It's almost two years since I started taking YouTube seriously and decided to make an intro, which means I've been using this intro for 150 videos. So today I want to change my intro, I want to redo it, I want to keep it kind of the same but make it more into my style. And I'm going to go through the whole process step by step over what I did. Uh, it's all 2D animated and I also actually use mostly free apps and programs except for the actual animation app but it's only five dollars so it's not that bad the thing is i have never actually animated anything as big as this before the most i've done is like something like this or this which is pretty much just simple gifs without any actual timings or structure it's just me doodling and i'm also done this 3d animation thing that i just had fun with I've never done anything like this, so it's gonna be a journey. Fun fact, I actually wanted to be an animator when I was younger, but then I realized I needed to draw the same character over and over again until it moved, and I didn't want to do that. So I decided to become a concept artist instead, where I design characters instead of animating them. But now I'm kind of getting more and more interested in, interested in animation because I can draw the same character over and over again without any trouble. So who knows, maybe I'll do more if you guys like this video. The program I will be using to animate my 2D animation intro is called Rough Animator. It's pretty much only meant to be for rough animating, but I actually use it for cleaning because you can make your own brushes, which I really, really enjoyed. And also I could not, for the love of me, find any other programs that did it as fluently and as easy as Rough Animator. It does cost around five pounds or five dollars. I can't remember I'll put it up on the screen and you can get it for PC and Mac as well and I really really like it there is of course a little bit of a learning curve but it's not as drastic as Photoshop or other 3d animation programs so I would just recommend try it out play around with it and I'm pretty sure you can get a grip of it pretty quickly and to do this a little bit properly I'm going to start by making a storyboard I had a very rough idea what I wanted, so I just quickly sketched that down in my Procreate app on my iPad. And it was just, I just wanted something that kind of connected with my old intro and created something new with 2D animation. So this is what I came up with. The little creature walks into the frame, he goes to the middle of the center of the screen, he rolls up and he breathes in and then out and out of his back sprouts a lot of little plants. Sounds easy enough when you just say it like that, right? But actually it included a run-in, walk-in cycle, curl up movement, breathe in and out, and then flowers sprouting up from his back, which would not be easy to do. To start on this daunted task, I started sketching out the main poses that was the curling up, the walking in, the sniffing that I added in between there and also the plants growing and from there I just slowly started to figure out which other frames I needed to put in, in between these main poses to create kind of a flowy movement. I knew that I wanted to create a little bit of a snuffle or a sniff that he does when he comes into the frame, he sniffs the place he wants to lie down and then he curls up. This took quite a while and required all my focus, which also meant that I stopped talking to the camera. This was actually supposed to be a let's explore this idea and try it out, but it's ending up like a shorter video with more of a direct voiceover, as you can tell already. Sadly, I am no animation expert. I am just going as I am going. I haven't taken any lessons. I've just watched a lot of YouTube videos and I like animation in general. So I don't have any tips for you guys when it comes to actually animating a character. I would just look up all the fantastic tutorials you can find on YouTube. There's a lot of them. Uh, I especially love Aaron Blaze. He has a lot of really long good videos and I was obsessed with watching his videos while I was animating my own. So after a bit of back and forth and sketching and sketching, I had this. Pretty stiff I know, but this was the first draft and I was pretty pleased with how it was turning out. 
And after a bit more tweaking of limbs and movement, I got this. By this time, I was really happy with where everything was going. I was happy with the movement, the little turn, everything was going great. Originally, I'm pretty sure most animators would do another rough pass, which would not be clean line art, but I didn't care about that. So I went straight into my line art and started lining all my 101 drawings. I didn't actually have a design for this creature more than what I had from my old intro. I actually have this sketch that I did last year I think and this other sketch that are kind of inspired by the same kind of creature but none of them are exactly what you're seeing me animate right now. And I made no character sheet, no character design or anything, I just went straight into line art and hope for the best. <laughs> Don't do this, I recommend making a turnaround of your character so you know how to draw them from every single angle. Mine just looks like a little marshmallow dinosaur so I was fine with it. So since we have quite a lot of time now left in by me just drawing and lining all my drawings that took me about, well, I don't know, six hours or something to do, I'll just be talking about what my original ideas for my old intro was uh, because I never actually told anyone. When I designed my old intro, I planned the creature to be a logo and the intro was just animated because I wanted to make it more interesting. Sadly, I never actually used that logo for anything, it was just left as my intro for these past two years. I did have some thoughts behind this design though. He is curled up and looks like an otter, which I feel like if I was an animal I would probably fall into a species similar to otters or badgers. And inside the circle you can see a forest and mountains resembling a clearing from a forest, symbolizing my name Norland, which roughly translates to North Grove. And to tie all those things together and give it a bit more magic, I let him grow trees out of his back. Ta-da! I think the reason that I never actually used the logo for anything, but my intro, is that the style wasn't really my thing. I think it's too clean and it doesn't have line art, and you know me, line art is my thing. So this is where the new animation comes in. I wanted it to be more of a Disney-esque 2D animated kind of intro because I absolutely love 2D animation movies and it's been a part of my inspiration since I could draw. <laughs> so that's what I ended up wanting to do. And now back to the process, I finished lining and I'm just cleaning it up and this is the final animation just in line art. Pretty smooth, eh? I'm not gonna lie, I'm very very pleased with what I managed to do. Something I actually realized later when I was watching Aaron Blaze's videos is that I should really have animated on twos and I think I mostly animated on ones on a 24 frame per second video, uh, which I don't think I needed to do. But here we are, and I learned my lesson. It pretty much means that for every second I draw 24 frames instead of animating on twos, which means I would draw 12 drawings per second in the 24 seconds. So you would show one frame two times. Now moving on to the coloring. I actually blocked in the color in Rough Animator, but I would recommend you to do this in the next step. Here is the animation just with block colors. Now, transporting the frames or the file from my iPad to my computer was a whole other step. I ended up having to export all 122 frames in a PNG file with transparent background so that I could color them all in some sort of program on my Mac. It did take a few tries, but I managed in the end, and then came finding a program on my Mac that I could use to color all my drawings. First, I of course tried Photoshop because I've animated in Photoshop before, but not with 120 frames that I need to color separately. So I went on the hunt on the internet and tried a lot of different apps that I could get for Macintosh. All of these apps are free by the way, so if any of them catches your fancy, you can find them online. This first one is Pencil 2D, did not work for me because I could not export how I wanted it to, it was really really weird, it just didn't work as a coloring program. I wanted my colors to be nice and easy to color with nice soft brush and maybe some hard brush and you know, I wanted to be fancy. I also tried a, a program called Synfig, I guess. Did not work for me either. I don't know what was up with that program. It was not what I wanted. <laughs> 
I of course looked into the other more expensive programs like Toon Boom, I think it's called Harmony now, and TV Paint that I really really want to get, but I could not spend that money. <laughs> but you know what program actually worked for me? Fire Alpaca! Wow, who knew Fire Alpaca actually had an onion skin layer mode, which means that each layer in your file actually is a frame in your animation, so when you turn this on, it actually stops showing anything else than what the one that you're selected on. Then you can actually group that layer into a folder and one folder, which means will mean one frame. So you can put your color layer, your other details and other things in that folder and that will count as that, as that frame. And who knew it would be that easy and Fire Alpaca actually have it. They even have this preview animation feature that you can look at your animation in different types of frame rate. So I could see it in slower or faster and it was pretty exciting to me that I could do it this easily. This is also where I would say please save your color blocking for Fire Alpaca because it will be a lot easier than doing it on Rough Animator. You can just export all the PNGs uh, from Rough Animator just your line art and that will work perfectly. You could even maybe clean it up in Fire Alpaca, who knows. You do not have the option to export as a movie from Fire Alpaca but that is completely fine because you can export as PNGs just as you imported it and then just import that into an editing software which I will show you later. This is also the point where I realized that my little creature here is starting to look like a mix between a Moomin and Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh and I am loving it. Also if I have one critique for myself, I should have animated the plants better with a little bit more of a spring, but this was, as I said, my first try of trying to color and line and finesse a 2D animation. And here is the colored version of my little intro. Moving on to the editing, I actually used After Effects for my last intro because I got it for free at work, but I don't have that now, so I had to find the next big best thing and I actually found that a while back called HitFilm Express is also a free program and you can pretty much edit as easily as you could in After Effects. This is where I will be editing in the sound, the background, everything else that I need to have in my intro for it to look finished. Uh, I know you've been hearing the sound on the other clips, but that is because Rough Animator actually allows you to have a soundtrack in the projects. Can't really do a tutorial right now on how I edited things together in HitFilm Express. It's, it's a whole learning curve that I'm still learning and I would recommend just looking up a lot of tutorials on YouTube because there's a lot of them and they all help me tons. Now to finish my little intro I needed a background for my little creature to walk on and here is a very quick preview of what I did in Procreate on my iPad. I might also change up the little brush to other objects at some points just because it was so easy to do. Now something I was excited to edit in was a little bit of a purr or some breathing noises because in my old intro you can clearly hear him purring when he breathes in and out and I thought that is something I need to keep. Though finding sound effects like that it's not very easy so I actually made my own. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I did that. <laughs> I of course kind of tweaked the settings a little bit later so that it's more high-pitched and sounds more like a Pokemon than me, luckily. <laughs> but it was a very easy way of getting sound effects without having to search all around the internet. And now I am finished. And it's time for the reveal. Here is the animation that I worked my ass off to do. It took me hours of work but it was worth it and I like it and I hope you guys like it and I will end this video with the reveal and I will see you guys next week. Bye bye! this off i'm just gonna say a huge thank you to all my patrons i love you so much and you support me so so much every month and just yeah thank you thank you so much also i just wanted to ask if you're here by the end of this video if you want me to do more animation 
because I'm interested in doing more animation and it could be very cool. So if you want that, let me know and we can figure something out. I might even ask you guys for a voice sample to create something for Nettle because I think it will be really cool. Okay, bye! Thank you.